Hi. Um, April is poetry month. So I thought it might be helpful if I read some poetry for difficult times. Poems are the skeleton of language. And uh, if it's good poetry, it cuts right to the core of the human condition and, and you feel it deep. So uh, the silver lining of this virus is to have to slow down and notice the small things. So I've selected four poems that are about detail and they're kind of like a meditation. So I hope this uh, is salve for your psyche. All right, the first one is by Wendell Berry and uh, I'm just gonna read it and then I'll do music with the other three. You ready? When despair for the world grows in me and I wake in the night at the least sound in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be, I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water and I feel above me the day blind stars waiting with their light. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world and am free. Pretty good, huh? Kind of apropos. Um, so uh, the world has been dealt a tough card. But uh, as the visionary theater director Peter Sellers said in a recent LA Times uh, interview, wait a minute, got to get my glasses. Um, this kind of suffering doesn't just show up for no reason and that there is something to be recognized and learned and absorbed and understood. And that's what this moment is about. So uh, the next two poems are by uh, Mary Oliver, a Northeast uh, Pulitzer poet. And man, she knows about detail. Uh, really beautiful. This first one's called Wild Geese. You don't have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about the spare. Yours, I'll tell you mine. Meanwhile, world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear petals of rain moving across the landscapes over the prairies and the deep trees and the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese high in the clear blue air are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh, exciting, over and over, announcing your place in the family of things. Yeah, Mary Oliver. So, um, my friend, the wonderful mythologist Michael Mead, uh, he says that we are in a global collective initiation. And uh, in initiations, you have to do it alone. Uh, the vision quest is solo, and that's why we're all sequestered separately. And uh, the initiation starts, and then there's the descent, and the descent is what we're in. Uh, and while you're in the descent, you, you need to remember there's a return. And hopefully when you return, you're, because of the initiation, you're seeing things with more vision, clearer eyes. 
So, um, you know, the greenhouse gases are down and uh, we, we do have a big footprint on the earth. That's what that is telling us. So, like Peter Sellers said, we got to learn something from this. Um, this next poem is called Summer Day and uh, summer is coming, but it's not going to be the usual summer. If the beaches are crowded, we'll have another surge. We can go to the beach, hopefully. Uh, maybe we'll have to wear masks, but uh, if we keep our distance, we'll get through this thing. The Summer Day, Mary Oliver. Who, ma who made the world? Who made the swan? And the black bear? Who made the grasshopper? This grasshopper. I mean, the one who has flung herself out of the grass, the one who is eating sugar out of my hand, who is moving her jaw back and forth instead of up and down, who is gazing around with her enormous eyes, complicated eyes. Now she shifts her pale forearms and thoroughly washes her face. Now she snaps her wings open and floats away. Now, I don't know exactly what prayer is, but I do know how to pay attention. How to fall down on the grass. How to kneel down on the grass. How to be idle and blessed. How to stroll through the fields, which is what I've been doing all day. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything else die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild precious life? Yeah. <clears throat> Um, so I'm going to close it out with William Stafford, Neighbors, with Neighbors One Afternoon. Uh, the last part is kind of a tough love. At, uh, it makes me think of what Father Greg Boyle, uh, the founder of Homeboy Industries here in L.A., helping gang kids, uh, he said, each day is closer towards normal. Uh, but the new normal, hopefully, will have more love. With neighbors one afternoon, William Stafford. Someone said, stirring their tea, I would come home anytime just for this, to look out the clear backyard air and then into this cup. You could see the tiniest pattern of bark on the trees and every slight angle of color change in the sunshine. Millions of miles of gold light lavished on people like us. You could put out your hand and feel the rush of years rounding your life in these days of ours. From somewhere, a leaf came gliding to the ground and slowly rested on the lawn. Remember that scene? Inside it, you folded the last of your jealousy and hate and all those deeds so hard to forget. Absolution. Swish! You took the past into your mouth, swallowed it, warm, thin, bitter, and good. 